and two and three. This is just a log jam right now in the standings. And uh, two teams here battling to get back into that middle to upper tier at the tournament. The East Hans Mastodons and the Saskatoon Diamondbacks. So hello to everybody back in the Halifax area. East Hans for you friends from Saskatoon. Just about 10 to 15 to 20 minutes on the highway outside of Halifax. And hello to once again to everybody in Saskatoon. Great to have you with us back on the broadcast. It's been a snake-bitten Diamondbacks team over the last couple games. They have really uh, been in a, some heartbreak games. They lost an extra innings game yesterday. They lost 5-4 to four, uh, yesterday as well. Earlier today, lost 7-5 to five to the two-time defending champs, uh, three cheers pub. So it's been a team that has lost three games at least by a total of four runs. Meanwhile, the Macedons come in here. They just lost a heartbreaker of their own. 8-6 to the uh, John Brown's Fawcett's, the host team. So two teams that have been a little bit snake-bitten the last couple days, trying to get back on track again and get into that upper tier. This is Ben Weidman, the center fielder, leading things off. Ben comes into the game batting 5 for 17, so a good tournament so far for Ben. 5 for 17, two runs scored, three doubles, and an RBI. Contact information is on the screen. Hope to hear from you. B. McLean Sports on Twitter, Community One Sports at gmail.com. Down on strikes is Weidman. Now batting number two for the, the first out. Player, Joel Langford. So whether you be in Saskatoon or around the Halifax area there at East Hans and across Nova Scotia, hope to hear from you. Live and interactive, shout outs, comments, feedback, let us know where you're watching from, who you're cheering for on the broadcast. Again, our second time talking to you folks from Saskatoon. And it has been a battle for you guys since winning that opening game, nine to two against Quebec. Uh, a tough loss in the feature game to Kelly's Pub on Tuesday night. Then that extra innings lost to BC. Or the extra inning loss, sorry, to uh, the Fawcett's John Brown's team, the host team. Then the 5-4 loss to BC. And then the tough 7-5 loss earlier today. It's been hard going for you guys. Up the middle. Joel Langford on board here with a single. Now batting number 44, the shortstop, Joel Eisner. And here is Joel Eisner. Eisner had a big blast in yesterday's game. One for 11 is Joel. But he had the one home run for two RBIs in a game yesterday. The former coach of uh, Matt Dudelay's Junior B team that uh, won a provincial championship. So a great hockey coach as well is Joel Leiser. The wind is blowing from left to right on your screen. It's a howling coming across the field from left to right. And rain looms overhead at any moment. The skies are dark overhead. It has held off for the most part the last little while. We did have one big thunderous downstorm about two hours ago, and that's what led to the long delay. This one originally a six o'clock start, now kicking off at 6.56. In there high. Jason Sanford to follow. Two and one the count here on Eisner. Swung on and fair, a fair ball. Kicks up the chalk and Langford comes home to score. Eisner still chugging around the bases. He'll stand up at third. And we just heard our first now batting number eight, thunder crack. Jason Sanford. Yeah, 
hopefully that is not going to happen again. But uh, a thunder crack at bat as Langford comes home on the triple by Eisner, his second hit, and he now has three RBIs. So Eisner at third with the RBI triple. He's now two for 12 with the three ribbies. That just barely touched the chalk down the left field line for a fair ball. But it was the right call. We are right down the line here, and you can see it clearly hit the chalk. That is swung on, and that will get foul down the third baseline. Just foul by about two feet. So again, B. McLean Sports on Twitter. Hope to hear from you. Gets through on the right side. Eisner scores. And it's a 2-0 game for East now Hans. Now number 53, the right fielder, Tyler Wynott. So Sanford, an RBI single. And after your first strikeout, East Hans now has three hits in a row, a single, a triple, a single. Two runs have come home. This is against Devin McCullough, who struck out 25 men through 13 innings coming into this thing. He has been a strikeout machine. Right now, his one out in the inning is also a K. So he struck out 26 through 13 and a third. One out. And a two runners in. A high pop fly, and that will get foul and unable to squeeze it out there on the third baseline. Tyler Wynott, that's foul. Tyler Wynott batting 364, 4 for 11 with a ribby. Two strikeouts. He's got a stolen base. He was caught stealing once. Three cheers, Pub, playing over there. The throw down to second, and sliding in safely is Jason Sanford. So Sanford has a stolen base. They're underway over on field one. Three, <coughs> three cheers ball. pub the first baseman, playing Quebec. Donnelly Archibald. So the three cheers pub versus Quebec over there right now on field one. And that is a good one. That's a, a three cheers pub team that's four and one. And Quebec two and two. They won twice yesterday as well. They completely turned their weekend around. Why not down on strikes? And McCullough, the strikeout machine, continues to get outs via the K. Here's Donnelly Archibald. Inside. Archibald having a rough tournament so far, batting 0-71, one for 14. Holes back on that riser. As McCullough trying to get out of this inning in good shape with just a two run deficit. Here comes McCullough. Up high again. Three balls and one strike. First base open. Jay Duffy would follow should Archibald reach. In there at the belt. And 
Donnelly Archibald doesn't agree, but again, as I said in the earlier game, I love that call, that pitch just above the belt. I think that should always be called a strike. These umpires have done a wonderful job this week, and I love that, that just above the belt strike. In there again for strike three, the same pitch. Called out on strikes is Archibald. But not before East Hans sends six men to the plate and get two runs, on two, Stoker, two runs on two hits. Two runs on three hits. Three hits, no sorry. And one runner left on base. One left on base, no errors, but two runs come across. But uh, so many times we've been doing these games, especially this month, I don't know how many times I've seen guys hit a pitch just above the belt. Miles! I mean, I see a lot of guys just who like swinging at high pitches around that area. And home runs, but a lot of times when it's called for a strike in that same area, guys don't agree. And I think the calling of the high strike is something that's sorely missing from the game. When you have that little extra inch on the strike zone, guys swing the bats, it keeps the games moving, strikes are being called. Just makes for such better uh, fast pitch or baseball to watch. But again, the umpires, these are the nationally picked umpires. These guys come from around Canada, flown in here to do this. These are the best of the best across the country. Community One Sports at gmail.com, B. McLean Sports on Twitter. Comments, opinion, feedback, shout outs. Let us know where you're watching from, who you're cheering for, if you have any relatives you're watching. All that great stuff. Leading off for Saskatchewan here in the bottom of the first, number 12, the pitcher, Devin McCullough. I'll retweet you, send you a shout out. Four o'clock there in Saskatoon, and just after five after seven here in Atlanta, Canada. Here's Devin McCullough. McCullough, the leadoff man, with Clement Haga and Pacoya way to follow. High chopper, and that'll be fielded by Schofield. Big Justin Schofield on the mound. Now batting number 19, the second for baseman, East Hans. Anthony Clemenaga. He is a horse on the mound for East Hans. Clement Haga, the second baseman. In there for a strike from Schofield, 0-1-1. Anthony batting 133 in the tournament. He's two for 15. A low and inside. Here comes Big Schofield. Bouncing one in front of home plate. Harvey is your third baseman. Eisner at short. Duffy at second. Archibald at first. Sanford the catcher. Caldwell in left. Weidman in center. And why not in right field? The defense here for the Mastodons of East Hans. In there for a strike. Schofield's got that characteristic grunt after he lets one fly. Two and two. In there, called strike three. Now batting number four. Clement Aga out on strikes. Here's Pacoy away. <laughs> Brendan Pacoy away has heard his name said probably ten different times here this week from a variety of PA announcers. As I mentioned earlier in the first game, 
I've had it pretty much under control. But even yesterday, I had nearly had a seizure at one point trying to spit it out. Brennan Pokoyewe, and he has been one of the great hitters for Saskatoon, batting 389, 7 for 18, two home runs, five RBIs. Change up in there for a strike. It's chilly tonight in Charlottetown for the first time this week. A cool night just off the plate. You can really feel the fall in the air. It's just a few weeks away from the fall time in Atlanta, Canada. And you can feel it crisp here tonight. The lights are on. It's just off the plate inside. Right now in Charlottetown. That is a high pitch outside. McCoy away has a walk. Right now in Charlottetown, 19 degrees. Now batting number 17, the first baseman, Trevor Ethier. But it feels like 24, apparently. Oh man, oh man, feels a lot colder than that. Everyone bundled up here tonight. There is the risk of the thunderstorm, a 70% chance tonight and overnight. Tomorrow morning, rain and showers. And then we're pretty good for a couple days. But there might be calling for rain again on Sunday. In for a strike from Schofield. Trevor Ethier. Ethier batting 385. Five for 13 with a home run and two RBIs. He had a home run earlier today. Outside, one and one. Strike two. One and two. Macedons and Schofield trying to put up a donut here after the two spot. Strike three. Ethier out on strike, Schofield second. Strikeout. And uh, Saskatoon sends four men to the plate. They get the no hits, one left on, no errors, no, no runs. No errors and one runner left on base. So we're live and interactive here on Bella Line Community One, B. McLean Sports on Twitter. Community One Sports at gmail.com. Hello out there to Ben Edgington watching. Newfoundland fast pitch checking in on Twitter. And Gubba Geisler. Great to hear from Gubba Geisler again. At the top of the second for Nova Scotia. The Diamondbacks Number fan. 47, the second baseman, Jay Duffy. Here's Jay Duffy. Aaron Harvey and Miles Coldwell coming up for Nova Scotia. So Duffy, Harvey, Coldwell, and then back to the top of the order for Ben Wiseman, should anyone reach. In there for a ball, the first pitch from McCullough. The 1-0. Inside, 2-0. Duffy, the second baseman. Comes in batting 200. 3 0. Duffy, 200, three hits in 15 at bats. He's got four RBIs. Has been prone to the strikeout. He struck out four times. And therefore, strike three and one. Aaron Harvey to follow, then Miles Coldwell. Starting to sprinkle out just a little bit. Kind of a mist, if you will. The 3 1. Fouled off, he'll do a 3-2. 
in there for strike three. So a great now job. Number 24, the third baseman. Devin McCullough Harvey. comes back to get Jay Duffy. And again, we talked about Devin McCullough with his strikeout. All four outs so far recorded via the K. So McCullough now going on 29 strikeouts in 14 and a third innings. So he's basically striking out two guys per inning. This is Aaron Harvey. Inside. Two nothing, three cheers leads Quebec over on field one there in the first inning. In there for a strike, one and two. Swinging underneath is Harvey. Harvey batting 125. He's got one hit and eight at bats. Got three walks. The one, two. In high. Two balls, two strikes here. Here comes McCullough. Strike three called. McCullough or Harvey out on strikes looking. Five now strikeouts in seven, the game. The left fielder, Miles Coldwell. And here's Miles Coldwell. Coldwell looking for his first hit. He is 0 for 9 with six strikeouts, is Miles. Got a piece of the changeup. 0 and 1. In there for a strike. 0 and 2 quickly on Coldwell. So McCullough, a strike away from striking out the side and recording six in the game. And rolls that one, slips under his fingers. One and two. Strike three. Caldwell out on strikes. McCullough strikes out the side. Six strikeouts in the game. Nova Scotia, no runs, on, no hits, no errors, no runners left on base. So it's business as usual right now for Devin McCullough. But in, in amongst those six strikeouts, Nova Scotia did score two runs. And three batters, they sent a single, or they had a single, a triple, and a single to score the two runs. Sandwiched in between a whole bunch of case for Devin McCullough. On Bella Lyon Community One, your leader in local sports webcasting in Atlanta, Canada. Two nothing for three cheers. They're still in the first over there at field one. The D-backs coming up with Jessen Potskin, Colin Sean, and Jim Clement Haga. Leading off here in the bottom of the second for the Saskatoon Diamondbacks, number 16, the designated player, Jessen Potskin. There's Jessen Potskin. Potskin batting 357. No home runs, three RBIs, five hits in 14 at bats for Potskin. And there for a strike. One and one. Way out in front of the changeup, one and two. The 
The one two for Schofield. Swung on and fouled down the first base side. And that will get out of play. They'll do the one two again. Potskin, Colin Sean, Jim Clemen Haga. To appear here in the bottom of the second for the Diamondbacks of Saskatoon. Trailing by two with a one and four record. They really need to get going here. Pitch on the outside. Two and two. Ball comes in. The 2-2. Over the top is Potskin. He'll strike out. Now batting number 37, the left fielder, Colin Shan. Here's Colin Sean. Colin batting 200, 0 for 2, with two walks. It's 2 for 10. In there for a strike. Justin Schofield so far yet to allow a hit with three strikeouts. I see, I see a lot of guys called out on strikes or swinging and missing here in this one. Both these guys can get a lot of outs. Up high. High in the air to left center and gone. Colin Sean. A solo shot that just clears the wall for a Bella Lion bomb here in the second. That'll trim the lead in half. Now batting number 39, the catcher, Jim Clemanaga. Little inside pitch. Sean able to muscle it out over the wall in left center. And just like that, the lead cut down to two to one. Here's Jim Clemenhaga. Clement Haga batting 071, just one hit in 14 at bat so far for Jim. A little bouncer back to the pitcher. Schofield throws it over. One to three goes Clement Haga. 18, the third baseman, Derek Arsene. There's Derek Arsene, the third baseman. Derek, the leading hitter on this team. He's got four hits in eight at bats and an RBI. Pat Burns to follow. Should Arsene reach? One run in, in the inning, the home run by Colin Sean. High in the air and foul out of play. Down the first base side, heads up over there. Everybody's okay. In there for a strike. And that'll do it. In the second inning, Arsene out on three pitches. In the bottom of the second for Saskatchewan. One run on one hit. There were no errors and no runners left on base. Saskatoon. At the end of two complete innings of play, it's Nova Scotia 2, Saskatchewan 1. Sends four men to the plate. They get the one hit and the one run on the blast by Colin Sean. So a home run for Colin Sean, and we'll go to the top of the third. With a two to one lead for Nova Scotia. Ben Weidman, Joel Langford, and Joel Eisner coming out. 
for the East Hans Mastodons. Two and three after just losing to the Fawcett's, for the John Brown's Fawcett's here of Charlottetown. Eight to six. And the Diamondbacks the at the one third, and four. The top of the order for Nova Scotia. Number four, the center fielder, Ben Weidman. Here's Ben Weidman. Weidman, the center fielder, struck out back in the first. Up high. 1 0 for McCullough. Weidman now batting 5 for 18 for the tournament. The 1 0 for McCullough. Foul tipped away to the backstop, one and one. Here comes the one one. Out in front is Weidman on the changeup. The one and two coming up. McCullough has struck out six men through two innings. Just getting a piece of the riser is Weidman. Just stay alive here, one and two. Just missing inside, two and two. The running count on McCalla is 31 strikeouts in 15 innings. So averaging over two strikeouts per for the tournament. One and two coming up on Weidman. It was it, the two, three, ho two, three, and four hitters are coming up, and they're the ones who were able to get to McCullough in the first just off the plate. Three balls and two strikes. A two to one gain in the top of the third. Here's your three two. Swung on and fouled out of play on the right field side or left field side. Now we'll do the three, two again. Just out in front, fouling it off. The full count again for Weidman. Shot, and what a snag down there at third for Arsene. A hot Joel shot, Langford. and Arsene stabs it. Looked more like he was trying to get it out of the way than catch it. Snagged up the glove and picks it out of the air. <laughs> Sheepish grin on his face down there for Ben, or for Arsene. What a grab, and Weidman just tagged that, but he is out. So one out in the top of the third. Ben Weidman, I don't know if you call that a line out. That's an understatement. 0-1 to Joel Langford. He singled and scored in the first. Langford. Now batting seven for 17 in the tournament is Joel. He's the DP. Just low. Just 
Just on the inside of the plate. So McCullough all around the plate right now. Pitches just off here. Down low, three balls, two strikes. A full count pitch coming up for Joel Langford. This is the part of the order again that in the first we're able to get a piece of McCullough with one out. A single, a triple, and a single. 3-2 coming up on Langford. And did he go? The appeal down to third. No, he did not. The shortstop, Joel Eisener. So Langford on for the second time in the game. Put him at first base with a walk, and here's Joel Eisner. And Eisner had the big hit last inning, the triple. That scored the first run of the game, and then he came around and scored on the single by Sanford. So one for one is Eisner with an RBI and a run scored. Eisner now batting two for 11. In there for a strike, 0-1-1. Just off the outside, one and one. In there for a strike, one and two. Langford down at first with the walk. He goes, shot down first is foul. Just missing down the first baseline. Aaron Emery on Twitter, thanks very much Aaron. in a two to one lead here for East Hans. McCullough, runner goes again, strike him out, and nope, sir, safe down there at second base. But Eisner out on strikes. Now batting the catcher, Jason Sanford. A stolen base for Langford. There's Jason Sanford. Sanford, an RBI single, and was stranded. Back in the first, first pitch swinging, and tardy. Sanford, the number four hitter in the lineup. Batting 333 in the tournament, five for 15 with three RBIs. Fouls out of one away, 0-2. Sanford just getting under. Again, that wind really blowing from left to right and out. So balls hit to right field. May travel here tonight. The 0-2, strike three call, or strike three swinging is Sanford. And that'll do it. For Nova Scotia in it's the third. The third for Nova Scotia. They no send runs, four no men hits, no errors, one to the plate. No runs, no hits, one left on. We'll go to the bottom of the third. In a pitcher's duel here, 2-1 East Hans leading Saskatoon. Eight strikeouts for McCullough through three innings. And three or four strikeouts for Justin Schofield as he heads out for his third inning of work. The 2014 Senior Men's Fast Pitch Championships on Bell Alliant Community One. B. McLean Sports on Twitter, community one sports at gmail.com. Over there, two nothing still in the second for a three cheers pub over Quebec. 
Over here at field two, two to one. Macedon's lead the D-backs. And out there for his third inning is Justin Schofield. Has given up the one hit, but it was a blast to left center that just cleared the wall. For Colin Sean. On a cold evening, seasonably cool here in Charlottetown. You can feel the fall in the air. Folks off in the bundled up. For Saskatchewan, big four, heavy coats and blankets. Fielder, Patrick Burns. Here's Patrick Burns. Burns fouls the first pitch down to the third baseline, just foul. Pat Burns batting 167. He's got one hit and six at bats. Three strikeouts. Playing center field today is Pat. He can do a lot of things for you. Left field, center field, pitch. We see him in a lot of different spots. Lays down the bunt and unable to handle the throw down at first is Archibald. Sanford pounced on it, made a good throw, but Archibald just now couldn't squeeze it. The pitcher, Devin McCullough. So that'll be a foul or a foul, an error on Archibald. Pat Burns at first. And here's Devin McCullough. And Donnelly Archibald might have broke his glove on that play, or he just wants to get rid of that glove. <laughs> Doesn't want to see that glove anymore after that error. But maybe he had a glove malfunction there. Goes to the dugout and gets a new mitt. So here's Devin McCullough. McCullough swings through the first pitch for strike one. Brookfield U18 Elks checking in. And a solid single from McCullough to left field. So McCullough now has his first hit of the game. Baseman, Anthony Clemenaga. Pat Burns goes to second. McCullough to first on the single. Runners at second and first here in the third for the Diamondbacks. Gets down the bunt. This time, no problem on the throw to first for Archibald. And Clement Haga will get now the sack bunt down. The shortstop, Brennan Okoy Owe. So Clement Haga gets the bunt down, and now runners at third and second. So thanks very much to the Brookfield U18 Elks. Checking in on Twitter. Cheering for the Dons. Pitch in there for a strike. To second, Duffy. Holds the runner, makes the play to Archibald to first. So a great play by Duffy. Now batting, Ranging towards baseman, second base, makes the catch. Holds Burns at third, and makes the play to first. Two outs in the inning. And here comes Trevor Ethier. Ethier struck out in the first. First pitch swinging here and missing. Ethier now five for 14 for the tournament. Strike two on Ethier. The 
the 0-2 from Schofield, trying to get out of the inning. Ethier, nicely done by Eisner. Six to three goes Ethier on the beauty play by Eisner. Saskatoon sends five men to the plate. And they get one hit, leave no two on, one hit, and no one runs error, and one error left on base. for East Hans. So we'll go to the top of the fourth here with Nova Scotia continuing to cling to a two to one lead. After three complete innings of play, it's Nova Scotia two and Saskatchewan one. The Saskatoon Diamondbacks desperate for a victory one and four. They got their main guy on the mound here in Devin McCullough. And he has been dealing for the most part. Struck out eight of the nine men he's retired. But in between all that, three hits in a row that led to two runs way back in the top of the first. And now Leading off in the top of the fourth, Saskatoon the trying to catch up. The right fielder, Tyler Wynott. Here's Tyler Wynott. Donnelly Archibald and Jay Duffy all coming up here. And the top of the fourth, why not struck out back in the second. Or the first, sorry. Shot to short. A hot shot. McCoy away. Makes the play. That's McCoy away. Nicely done. Knocked it down, picks it up, batting, makes a good throw. Donnelly Archibald. Yeah, why not out on the good throw? Here's Donnelly Archibald. He struck out as well in the first. Change up. Out in front is Archibald. So Archibald out on strikes in the first. Bases empty here in the fourth, one out. Up high, one and one. Archibald and then Duffy. Out in front again is Archibald. 0-2, oh or 1-2, sorry. Here comes the 1-2. Swinging and missing is Archibald. He's out now on strikes. The second baseman, Jay Duffy. So nine strikeouts for McCullough. And here's Jay Duffy. Duffy. Struck out in the second. And now three for 16. Fouls that off the backstop. 0 and 1. The 0 1. Up high, 1 and 1. Kella has retired four in a row. And 11, or 10 of the last 11 men he's faced. The only blemish, a walk to Langford in the third. Fouled off. Down low. McCullough a strike away from getting out. 
Inside. Three balls and two strikes. Full count pitch coming up against Jay Duffy. Aaron Harvey would follow should Jay Duffy reach. Here comes the 3-2. Swinging and missing is Duffy out on strikes. Ten strikeouts for Devin McCullough through four innings. Top of the fourth. Scotia, no runs, no hits, no errors, no runners left on base. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left on base. We go to the bottom of the fourth in a good old pitcher's battle. Two to one here. East Hans leading Saskatoon. And uh, Justin Potskin, Colin Sean, and Jim Clemenhaga coming up for Saskatoon. Clemenhaga or uh, Derek Arsony, should anyone reach. If you remember, it was Colin Sean who He's the only guy so far who's touched up Schofield with a solo home run back in the second. Schofield has only given up two hits. McCullough's given up three. McCullough the 10 strikeouts, and Schofield has four through three innings. Leading off in the bottom of the fourth for Saskatchewan, the designated player, Jesson Potskin. So here's the DP Potskin. Struck out back in the second at Potskin. Now five for 15, batting 333 with three RBIs. Potskin, Sean Clemenhaga. Schofield out there for his fourth inning. Swinging over the top is Potskin for strike one. Quebec and BC coming up here from field two. That game originally scheduled for field one, but they moved over here to field two after the cancellation or after the uh, rain delay. They got to get the games moving along. Change up way out in front is Potskin. Strike three on Potskin, his second strikeout now of the game. The fielder, Colin Shan. Five strikeouts for Schofield, and here's Colin Sean. Colin had the solo blast to left center back in the second. The only run so far for Saskatoon. Just off the plate, 1-0. Schofield gets his sign. And missing on the bunt is Colin Sean, one and one. Second baseman, Jay Duffy. A lot of fun to watch down there. For the Macedons, he is just non-stop with the chatter. In there for a strike, one and two. <laughs> Just nonstop is Duffy. Here's the one, two. Swinging and missing. And that'll be strike three. The throw down to first to now make it official. The catcher, Jim Clemenaga. Here's Jim Clemenhaga. Jim Bounce back to the pitcher in his first at bat. In the bottom of the fourth of a two to one game. 
Bouncing one behind home plate is Schofield. The 1-0. You're tied 2-0. Two balls, no strikes. Two outs in the bottom of the fourth. Schofield now with six strikeouts. Three and zero. Clement Haga trying to work a walk here, and that would work out well. He would be replaced as the catcher, and they would get Speedy Colin Sean on first. Here with two outs, in there for a strike. So we'll see what Clement Haga does here. Does he make Schofield throw one more? Or will he be looking for a pitch to drive in the zone? The 3-1. Takes all the way. Clement Haga gets the walk. He'll go down to first. Now batting the third baseman, Derek Arsene. So Clement Haga will be at first, and he'll be replaced by, as I mentioned, Colin Sean, who I'm sure Jim Clement Haga would have no problem admitting Sean probably a little faster than Big Jim. Uh, so now you got a speedy runner at first base representing the tying run here in the bottom of the fourth. Derek Arsene struck out back in the second. Swings and misses on the first pitch. Arsene now four for nine with three strikeouts. Arsene of course made the life-saving catch in the third on that line shot. One of the defensive gems of the game. 0-1 oh on Arsene. Pat Burns would follow should he reach. Back to the top of the order should both get on. The 0-1. Oh 0-2. Oh Two similar pitches, two similar results. The 0-2 from Schofield. Strike three call or swinging for Arsene. Schofield strikes out the side. Sandwiched in between in the a walk. Of the fourth for Saskatchewan. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one runner left on base. One runner left on, no runs, no hits, no errors. At the end of four complete innings of play, the score remains Nova Scotia 2, Saskatchewan 1. Seven strikeouts for Schofield through four innings. McCullough with ten through four innings. On Bell Alliant Community 1, your leader in local sports webcasting in Atlanta, Canada. 2014 Senior Canadian Men's Fast Pitch Championships. Getting ready for a big weekend. The Masters will be here. They'll be starting to play. Leading off for Nova Scotia. Trying to finish up today's action. Aaron Harvey. Without any cancellations, it has been a cold night. We had the one rain delay when it really came down just around three hours ago. Since then, the rain has held off. No games lost yet to postponements. We've had good luck. First two days were beautiful here. 0-1 on Aaron Harvey, the third baseman. Harvey struck out looking back in the second inning. Mastodons and Diamondbacks in a huge game here in the round robin. Both teams finishing off their round robin schedule. Diamondbacks at one and four. Mastodons at two and three.
Mass again, the Diamondbacks have had heartbreaking losses. Chopper down to first. Ethier, and nicely done on the cover by Clement Haga. Now batting the left fielder, Miles Coldwell. So a great play defensively by Ethier and Clement Haga to get Aaron Harvey. He's 0 for 2. Here's Miles Coldwell. The Diamondbacks need a win if they want to continue on. If they were to win this game, both the Diamondbacks and the Dons would be at two and four. Fouled away. Over there at field number one, still two to one right now, three cheers pub leading team Quebec. Quebec has to play that game and then Get over here for the nightcap. In there for a ball. Back to the top of the order with Ben Weidman after this. Strike three, the 11th strikeout. Now for McCullough. The center fielder, Ben Whiteman. So McCullough strikes out Coldwell. He's now over two with the two Ks. And here's Ben Weidman. Weidman struck out in the first and had that laser beam to third caught by Arsene back in the third. That should have been a single. Arsene just flat out robbed him. On the cusp of nightfall in Charlottetown, the wind howling left to right on the field. Dark skies overhead, but the rain holding off. On the third day of round robin play. Just inside. Coming up in the bottom of the fifth. Pat Burns, then back to the top of the order with McCullough and Clement Haga. Foul to the backstop. Should Wyman get on, we'd see Joel Langford. That bounces off home plate. And the umpire trying to shake that off. Got it on the meaty part of the arm. Two balls, two strikes. Batter calls time to give the umpire a little bit of time to shake it off. Strike three. Out on strikes is Weidman. Swinging. 12 strikeouts for McCullough. In the top of the fifth for Nova Scotia. No runs, no hits, no errors, no runners left on base. McCullough now has 37 strikeouts through 18 innings. And we'll go to the bottom of the fifth with Pat Burns, McCullough, and Clement Haga coming up to bat. Trailing by a run here at the championships is Saskatoon trying to hold on to a chance to play and maybe a tiebreaker tomorrow. Community One Sports at gmail.com. B. McLean Sports on the Twitter. Live and interactive. Hope to hear from you. Comments, feedback, shout outs. Love to hear where you're watching from. Whether it be Saskatoon, East Hans, or anywhere across the world. Love to hear the more exotic locales. Thanks to everybody who's reached out so far. Here in the bottom of the fifth, the center fielder, Patrick Burns. So Patrick Burns reached on an error back in the third and was stranded at third base. 
Burns playing center field. Justin Schofield out for his fifth inning of work. Seven strikeouts so far for Big Justin. And there for a strike, 0 and 1. Oh, and 2. Al Doran checking in on Twitter. Thanks very much, Al. With an update for everyone at home. Again, make sure you follow Al's website, Al's Fastball, on Twitter and his website, alsfastball.com. And again, on Twitter, Al's Fastball. Owen 2 on Pat Burns. Burns that wide stance. Holds off. And pitch outside. 1 and 2. Just a one run ball game here in the fifth. A big front by Schofield. Pitch inside. 2 and 2. The 2-2. Two -two. Strike three. Burns now strikes out swinging. The pitcher, Devin McCullough. Here's Devin McCullough. McCullough grounded out to the pitcher. Had a single back in the third. Hits one to center field. Is he gone for the second time in the tournament? It is. Devin McCullough. A Bella Lyant bomb to tie the game up at two. His second home run here at field number two. Let off his tournament with a solo shot. And now, now batting, gets the, the big baseman, one here to make it two Anthony to two. Clemenaga. McKella goes yard. That's the second solo shot home run for Saskatoon to straightaway center field. And McCullough will touch them all, and we are tied at two. So the pitcher helps himself out. And a brand new ball game here between Saskatoon and East Hans. Here's Andrew or Anthony Clement Haga struck out in the first, had a sacrifice bunt back in the third. Up high. And that sack bunt was a thing of beauty. Clement Haga, two for 16 in the tournament. In there for a strike. Schofield trying to settle down here. Down low. Two balls and two strikes on Clement Haga. Schofield comes set. Bouncing ball to short. A chance for Eisner. Makes the play. Nicely done by Eisner. That was a slowly hit ball. Now batting the shortstop. Brennan Pokoy Owe. And Clement Haga. Good speed down the first baseline, but Eisner makes a strong throw to get him. Pokoy Owe. Walked. And grounded out to the second baseman. Away. And then Ethier. 
And should anyone reach, we'll see Potskin. In there for a strike. Swinging over the top is Pacoy away. Schofield having a hard time with that right pant leg. It's the second time we've seen him try to work on that here in this inning. The old one from Pacoy or to, to Pacoy way. Outside one and one. Pacoy way batting eight for 20 in the tournament. Swing and a miss, one and two. Koiwe has gone yard twice with five RBIs. Swings at the riser and missing by a bunch. And that'll do it. Koiwe out on strikes. And in the fifth inning, they send four men to the plate. One hit, none left on base. No errors, one run. Close as it gets. Nova Scotia, two. Saskatchewan, two. On a solo blast by Devin McCullough. Colin Sean, a solo home run in the first. McCullough here in the, or in the second. McCullough in the fifth. And we are tied up at two. Nova Scotia back in the first. Had a single, a triple, and a single to score two runs. Since then. Leading off at the top of the sixth for Nova Scotia. The designated player, Joel Langford. Since then, Devin McCullough has cruised. He's retired 14 of the last 15 men he's faced. Joel Langford, the man up to the pate now, is really the only guy who's seen him well. He has a single and a walk. So this is McCullough's nemesis at the moment. Joel Langford, single, came home to score a run. And walked, had a stolen base, and was stranded in the third. The two, three, four hitters for East Hans in the top of the six and fouled away right on it was Langford, and he knows it. He saw that all the way. Took a big hack, but came up underneath. And fouls it straight back. Just up high over the belt. In there for a strike call. Two strikes now. On Langford, two and two. Low, or sorry, three and two is the now balls a strike call. Shortstop, Joel Eisner. And now Langford down to first with the walk. And once again, he solves McCullough. A single, two walks. He's been on base three times. So the go-ahead run at first base here in the form of Joel Langford. And now Joel Eisner comes to the plate. Eisner had the triple that scored Langford in the first and struck out in the third. Pitch gets over the head of Clement Haga and down to second goes Langford. So Langford now the go-ahead run at second base. Al Doran, thank you very much. What a great pitcher that is. Watching from the corporate head office in the big smoke, but the heart always in Hans County, Nova Scotia. That's a good place to have your heart. Man, what a 
Beautiful area. And for you friends from Saskatoon, just out beyond Halifax, heading towards Shore. Swing and a miss for Joel Eisner. Peter Carroll, thank you very much on the email. Couldn't make it to the island, cheering on the Mastodons. Thank you, Peter Carroll. Up high. So great to have you guys. Some tweets and emails coming in here. Three to two in the fourth inning over at Field One. Three Cheers Pub leading Quebec in a big game over there. In there for a strike. Four and one, Three Cheers Pub versus two and two, Quebec. We're gonna see Quebec over here at field two to finish off the day against the Souk Loggers. What a story the Souk Loggers have become. They've won three in a row, and including beating the two Newfoundland teams. The wind is blowing, howling from left to right right now. The full count pitch with Langford at second. And a walk. And going down to third is Langford as it got past Clement Haga. So two walks in a row. And going to second, what a heads up play. The catcher, Jason Sanford. Joel Eisner. With Clement Haga and McCullough not paying attention. And down to second goes Eisner. So now Eisner at second, Langford at third. And they're going to go and talk to Devin McCullough. What a heads up play that was by Joel Eisner. So Joel Eisner, one of the big sluggers on the team, a great hockey coach back in the Halifax area as well. And Trent McKeel will come in to run for Eisner. So Trent McKeel comes in to run. In there for a strike now against Jason Sanford. Base, number 27, Trent McKeel. Jason Sanford. Had a single and an RBI in the first. Struck out in the third. Fouls that one away, 0-2. This is Brian Reese checking in on Twitter. Thanks very much, Brian. From Bowmanville, Ontario, cheering on his friend and mentor, Doug Webster, worked the plate in tonight's battle. That's awesome stuff. Thank you, Brian. Oh, win two. Watching the mentor, Doug Webster. They'll do the 0 2 again to Sanford. Sanford. And then why not? And Archibald. Runners at third and second. Strike three. Swinging at the riser is Sanford. Now batting. He's out on right strikes. Fielder, Tyler Why not? And here's Tyler Why not? Why not? Struck out in the first. Grounded out to short in the fourth. Ooh, having a hard time laying off the high heat right now is East Hans. Why not? Takes a swing at one. Comes up underneath. Inside called strike 0 and 2. McCullough trying to work his way out of this via the strikeout. He's got 13 in the game, one in the inning, and an 0-2 count on Tyler Wynott. Go ahead, run at third. Strike three. Out on strikes is Wynott. 
Now batting the first baseman, Donnelly Archibald. And with runners at third and second, McCullough has struck out two in a row, is one out away from getting out of this jam. Donnelly Archibald. Archibald has struck out twice. Up high, 0-1, oh or 1-0, oh, sorry. Swinging and missing at the high heat is Archibald. We are in at the top of the six, down low. Two and one. Here comes McCullough, in there for a strike. In disagreement is Donnelly Archibald, but I tell you what, right now McCullough has 14 strikeouts. So I don't think the batter is going to get the call here. That has been given to McCullough, that inside corner. Oh, Saskatoon thought they had their exit pitch. They thought they were out of this thing. But they'll get back, the first baseman, second baseman, all making their way to the dugout. But they'll have to dig back in in the infield. The full count pitch with first base open coming up to Archibald. Holds back, and he'll go down to first with the walk. Now batting the second baseman, Jay Duffy. Only the second walk of the game for McCullough. We are in at the top of the six. The bases are loaded. A 2-2 game in this pivotal round-robin matchup on the last day of round-robin competition. First strike swinging is Jay Duffy. Duffy has struck out twice so far. The 0-1 from McCullough. Strike two called. Langford is at third. Eisner is at second. Archibald is at first. Kala one strike away from getting out of this jam. Calling timeout is Jay Duffy. Here comes McCullough. Rolls one, and that's going to allow the sleet, allow the leading run to come home. Langford will come home on the wild pitch. Got past Clement Haga. And Langford comes home to make it three to two. Man, oh man, what a tough break for McCullough. Oh and two, a strike away from getting out. Tried to waste one. And it got under Clement Haga to the backstop. And now, still one and two here. McCullough's gonna try to shake that off. Buckle down, get out of the inning. He does. But the go-ahead run comes home in the form of Langford. No hits in the inning. Three walks. And three strikeouts. And a pass ball or a wild pitch leading. In the top of the six for Nova Scotia, one run. To the go-ahead run. No hits, no errors. And two runners left on So the how's that for a line? Three strikeouts, three walks, a wild pitch. The run comes home. And a 3-2 lead for McCullough here in the sixth inning. Devin McCullough has 15 strikeouts through 16 or through six innings in this game. Devin, Devin McCullough now has 40 strikeouts 
through 19 innings. But they trail three to two because Schofield has not been denied either. He's pitched very, very well. Leading off for Saskatchewan here in the bottom of the sixth. The first baseman, Trevor Ethier. Danielle McDougal checking in. Thank you, Danielle. Hello out there to Marley Caldwell watching. A shout out from mom and dad here. Watching in the front row. That is hit to left center and unable to catch it out there is Weidman. Chugging for third is Ethier. Safe. Ethier with the triple. Weidman nearly made the catch. It nearly got out. Just about three feet away from getting out. Now batting the designated player, Jesson Potskin. But now Ethier goes to third. And now the tying run at third with no outs. Man, that just nearly cleared the wall. So Marley Caldwell out there in Nova Scotia. Hello to you from the Caldwell family in the bleachers. Bouncing ball. Schofield trying to dig down here. It's Justin Potskin. High gas outside. Great crowd over here taking in this one. All lined up down the left and right field fence. Bleachers are full on a chilly Charlottetown night. A little dribbler back to the pitching mound. Schofield makes the play to first. So Potskin now, out one to three. Colin Shan. And here's Colin Sean. So Schofield gets the first out. We're in the bottom of the six. A 3 2 game. Here's Colin Sean. Sean had the Home run, back in the second, the solo shot, and it struck out in the fourth. This place is alive right now, what atmosphere. Two strikes, great crowd. Lots of chatter from both teams. A runner at third, representing the tying run in Ethier after the leadoff triple. One out, and here comes your 0-2 from Schofield. The 0-2. Up high, one and two. Here comes Schofield. Swinging and missing is Colin Sean. Out on strikes. Catcher, Jim Clemenaga. And here's Clemen Haga. Schofield has retired two in a row since the triple. One out away for getting out of this. Clemen Haga grounded out to the pitcher and struck out. 
or check that walk, sorry. <laughs> Grounded out to the pitcher and walked in Clement Haga back in the fourth. Been a tough tournament for Clement Haga at the plate, but all he need is a duck snort, a Texas leaguer, anything to score the tying run. Sanford hesitates for throwing that back, thought he had a strike. Clement Haga. Gets set, got that great wide stance hovering over the plate. Outside low. First base is open. Should Clement Hager reach, we'd see Derek Arsony. Here comes Schofield. Ball four. Once again, Clement Hager walks. Now batting the third baseman, Derek Arsony. And once again, Clement Hager will be replaced by Colin Sean at first base. And again, this is a great substitution for Saskatoon. Much faster runner at first base, representing the go-ahead run. And they have one of their leading hitters at the plate in Derek Arsony. Arsony, 0 for 2 in this game with the two strikeouts, but did come in batting 500. So 4 for 10 now is Derek. Runners at third and first. To third, Harvey. Yes, sir, he makes the play. Six to three, goes Arsene. And East Hans will escape the sixth inning. Trevor Ethier led off the inning with a triple. And they can't get him home. One hit, no errors. One hit, two, two left on base, on base, no errors, no six, runs. Play, it's Nova Scotia three and Saskatchewan two. And we go to the seventh inning in a one-run beauty. B. McLean Sports on Twitter, community one sports at gmail.com. Daniel McDougall on Twitter. The fate of the Mastodons if they win or lose. It's these round robin Thursdays or the final day of round robins you really never know how it's going to all play out. There's still a lot of fast pitch to play. Right now over in field one Three Cheers Pub is leading Quebec 5-3. to three. Now if Three Cheers if uh, Quebec was to win that game they would go to 3-2. and two. They would play BC later on tonight who's 3-2. and two. But if Quebec loses that game they'll be 2-3. and three. Right now, East Hands is two and three. Saskatoon, one and four. So if East Hands was to lose to this game, I think they would go to a tiebreaker. If they were to win this game, then they would just have to wait and see whether or not they would reach double, be a double elimination team or if a single elimination team. Now batting for Nova Scotia, number 13, Brian Gillis. The Diamondbacks, without a doubt, have to win this game. to have any chance of moving on to play on, fr on uh, Saturday. But tomorrow night, are the double elimination games. First place versus fourth place, second versus third. And then the fifth and sixth place teams take to the field at 10 a.m. and 12 on Saturday morning. In there for a strike from McCullough. East Hans with a one run lead. 
Aaron Harvey, Miles Coldwell, and Ben Weidman. In there for a strike. Up high. And swinging and missing is Aaron Harvey. Now batting number 55, Max Anthony. Six string strikeouts for McCullough. Here is Miles Coldwell. Coldwell has struck out twice. Again, how out there, Marley watching from mom and dad here in the front row in the bleachers. A pitch way up high from McCullough. I got away from him. McCullough trying to keep East Hans at three. Give his team a chance. Only trailing by one in the bottom of the seventh. Just missing down low. Two and one. Caldwell. Chopper to third. Arsene, a nice play. Five to three for the second out. And here's Ben Weidman. Now batting the center fielder. Ben Weidman. Weidman, the center fielder. He's 0 for 3. Struck out twice and popped out to short. Quebec and BC coming up here from field two. Man, oh, man, the ramifications still left here. Three cheers pub. You can almost for sure put them through to the double elimination tournament. But still not sure about a lot of the other teams. Shot down the near field or a third baseline. Just foul. Joel Langford would come to the plate. Should Weidman reach? We are in the top of the seventh. In there for strike three. Weidman called out on strikes. Three up, three down here in the seventh. For Nova Scotia in the top of the seventh. No runs, no hits, no errors, no runners left on base. Devin McKellar is going to finish with 17 strikeouts. Well, anyway, assuming they don't tie the game or win it in the seventh. But right now he has 17 strikeouts through seven innings. Striking out 17 of the 21 men he retired. And the running total I have on Devin McCullough is 42 strikeouts in 20 innings. Pat Burns, Devin McCullough, Anthony Clemenhaga, and should anyone reach, Brennan Pacoyawe. As we go to the bottom of the seventh, Saskatoon, they're weak, very likely on the line here. Well, it is. Leading off for Saskatchewan here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Number 14, the center fielder, Patrick Byrne. With a loss, they would finish one and five. And with everybody else, with at least two wins, they would be out for the week. So Burns reached on an error, struck out in the fifth. Burns, McCullough, Clement, Haga. And I tell you what, if they were to lose this game, they really would be 
the heartbreak team of the tournament with all their one run losses here in the last two days. Schofield trying to finish it off. And therefore a strike. Burns swings through it. Over there in field two, still 5-3, three, three cheers, leading Quebec. Burns swings and misses again, one and two. You know they'd love to get Burns before that dangerous part of the order comes up, beginning with McCullough. Burns down the right field line and fair. Burns chugging for second and now third. And he will stand up there with a leadoff triple. Slices one down the right field line and he's in at third. What a start for Saskatoon to this inning. Remember last inning, they had Ethier in the exact now same spot, the pitcher, but couldn't bring him home. But now they got Burns at third, and here comes the dangerous part of the rotor, beginning with McCullough. McCullough, one for three. He had a single back in the third, and a home run, the solo shot, back in the fifth. D-backs in business. Schofield once again. Breathes down into his chest. Gets his sign, here he comes. One and oh. On McCullough. Tying run at third base. Go ahead run at the plate. Winning run, I should say. At the plate. The 1 0. Just outside, 2 0. Clement Haga would follow. And Pacoy away. Here comes the 2-0. In there for a ball, 3-0. Sure, maybe they're staying away the unintentional, intentional walk, as they call it. Could be staying away from a color here, Just checking to see if he'll swing at something and put him on at first. I don't think you'd put the winning run on though. The 3-0. In there for a strike, three and one. So the 3-1, McCullough will be looking for something to drive. Here comes Schofield. A bouncer down to first. They'll tag McCullough and still at third is Burns. So McCullough grounds out to third. The Archibald Anthony looks the runner back to the bag. And this is unbelievable. Still unable to get a runner home from third. Trevor Ethier tripled in the six. Four men came to the plate. Couldn't get him home in the six. And now Burns at the plate, or at third, and McCullough can't get him home. So we have five batters for Saskatoon in the last inning and a third that haven't been able to get a run home from third. Chopped on the first pitch to the backstop. It is Clement Haga. Clement Haga struck out in the first, had a sacrifice bunt, and grounded out to the shortstop. The U18 Elks checking in from Bookfield, cheering on the Mastodons. Looking for Justin Schofield to slam the door. <laughs> He's got some work here. One out. 
Swinging and missing is Clement Haga. One and two. Can Schofield buckle down and end this game? This would be the escape of the tournament so far, should he get out of this inning. After he got out of the six as well. Ethier was left stranded at third. And now Burns would just love to touch home plate with the tying run. The one, two. Did he go? They'll appeal down at third. No, he did not. Two and two. The riser, Clemen Haga, holds off, and he'll stick in for the two and two. On deck is Brennan Pokoyaway. The two two. Did he go? This time he did. Clement Haga out on strikes. Now batting the shortstop, Brennan Pokoyaway. And here is Brennan Pokoyaway. Walked, grounded up to second, struck out. Has Pokoyaway. He's probably been the best hitter this tournament for Saskatoon, and right now he's their last hope. The Diamondbacks down to their final out. It's just off the plate, one and all. Ethier would follow should Pacoyaway reach. A 1 0 from Schofield. Change up. A high fly ball to short right field. And coming in and making the catch is why not? Nova Scotia is going to hang on. Unbelievable. Two innings in a row. They get the runner to third and they can't score them. Hard to believe. Ethier. Got to third in the sixth. Burns got to third in the seventh, in the of the seventh with no outs. No and Saskatoon no could not hitters, bring him home. One runner left on base. And this tournament of heartbreak the last and two after days. The, uh, teams have had their handshakes. We asked them to go to their respective base. Will officially for end for Saskatoon. Uh, of the players of the game award. And uh, it'll be done well, by They Kevin lost Adelbaum, so many games by one community. run. They lose this game three to two. Unable to cash in that final run to tie it up. Justin Schofield twice pitching himself out of a jam. He'll get the win. Devin McCullough the loss. Saskatoon is eliminated. They'll finish the tournament 1-5. One 1-5. To five. One five. Every other team in the tournament has at least two wins. And now the Mastodons will have to wait and see where they come out in all this. Will they be off to double elimination as maybe a three or four seed? Will they be a fifth or sixth place team that doesn't play Ladies until and Saturday morning we'll make the in single elimination? Players of the game. And for Here's your player of the games. Number 12, the pitcher, Devin McCullough. Devin McCullough, the player of the game for Saskatoon. And for Nova Scotia, the player of the game, number 44, the shortstop, Joel Eisner. And Joel Eisner, player of the game. Congratulations to both teams on a game well played. Thanks for the wonderful excitement. Of what a great here at the game he at had. The Central Field. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. And along with the great pitching performance by Schofield, Eisner, the, whole, the solo home run, the K, and the walk for player of the game. Well, that'll do it. Friends, so much... Thanks so much for being with us in Saskatoon. Hope the guys had a good time here this weekend in Charlottetown. Thanks for being with us on the broadcast, everybody who reached out. Hope you enjoyed there in beautiful Saskatoon. We will bid you adieu for now and hope to talk to you again in the future. And for you friends in East Hants, you're off to play either tomorrow night or uh, Saturday morning here at the tournament. 
You've been watching a presentation of Bell Alliant Community One, the leader in local sports webcasting in Atlanta, Canada, the 2014 Senior Canadian Men's Championships from Charlottetown, PEI. The final score, three to two. East Hands beat Saskatoon. Back in a little bit with Quebec and BC. Goodbye for now from Charlottetown.
no, no, that's fine. Yeah, just. Sorry. Oh, Sorry, boss. Okay. It's a delicate instrument, this webcasting.